Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. As you are able, may I invite you to stand and sing with us, Christ the Lord is risen today. Welcome to First Methodist Church here in West Monroe. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Chris. I'm the pastor here. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us on this Easter Sunday. Earlier in the service, you got some red pads. If you worship with us regularly, use those to let us know you were here. If you are our guest this morning and would like to do so, there's a visitor information card in there. If you would like, give us a little bit of info on yourself. And if you take it to that back table in the corner, we have a gift to give you to say thank you for worshiping with us today. I want to make just a couple of brief announcements in the worship folder, you'll see all of our information on our children and youth ministry events that are happening. I do want to make note of one large event coming up on Sunday, April 21st from 3 to 5 p.m. We are hosting a family afternoon at the park. We want to provide for our community an afternoon of fun and enjoyment with snow cones and the rock climbing wall from the Boy Scouts and a lot of other events. If you know of anyone who would like to come to this, if you would like to come, just come on, uh, it's on us. We just want to enjoy time with our community. Uh, one other thing, we do have a Wednesday night meal here. If you're planning on coming this Wednesday and joining us, uh, the menu is a nacho bar, and there's not a whole lot better than that. So come on and get a nacho bar. If you want to sign up, we've got these cards right outside the worship space. You can grab one, sign up, and turn it into us, or you can sign up on our Realm Connect app. Well, we've gathered together this Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that brings us as we do so. May we go to God together in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for what you have done for us. We celebrate your goodness to us and our prayers that it would overflow from our lives into those around us. Let everything we do and say here draw us closer to you and closer to one another. And it is in the name of Christ, the risen Lord, that we pray. Amen. As you are able, may I invite you to stand once again for our affirmation of faith and our Gloria Patri.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading today is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 55. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in and death was arrested was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace is so free, washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down. from my chains I'm a prisoner no more a shame was a ransom he faithfully bore he canceled my debt and he called me his friend when death was arrested in my life began oh your grace so Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Savior displayed on a criminal's cross 
darkness rejoice as though heavy had But then Jesus arose with my freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your end. As we come to our prayer time this morning, there's always folks in our congregation, our community, who stand in need of our prayers. Uh, Cecil Willis, uh, his oldest sister, passed away early or late last week, and the services will be tomorrow. So we want to pray for his family as he travels and they go through that. Uh, there's other folks who are uh, still walking through the grief of losing a loved one. We want to pray for them that God's grace and comfort would be there. There are still those who are uh, struggling with health issues. We want to pray for God's healing and God's comfort to be with them through that. We want to continue to pray for our communities and our schools during uh, the more stressful time as they try to wrap up the school year. And I'm sure that there are needs on your hearts and minds. Uh, just so you know, also in those red pads is a little, bit, a little form for prayer requests. If you'd like us to join with you in prayer about anything, you can put it on there. And you can even check boxes uh, one box will keep it confidential between just you and the pastor, one between you and the pastor and the prayer team. One says that it's free to put on the church-wide prayer list. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with, we want to be sure to be in prayer with you. So with that, may we pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks again on this day for your provision for us. Lord, you truly made a way for us that we could never make for ourselves and that way includes uh, your victory over death itself. So while we grieve and while we mourn the temporary loss, we know that it is not permanent. We know that there is a day when we will be together again in your kingdom, and we give you thanks for that. And we ask for the grace and the strength to carry on through these days until that day. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with health. We pray for your healing to come through treatments and medicine, through rest through doctors and nurses and technicians, and through your divine hand. We pray for your grace to be upon those who are on our hearts right now. And Lord, for those needs we've not mentioned, you see them and you know them, and you are the God who answers. So we lift our prayers to you. And Lord, we do pray together as your children, praying in faith the prayer that you taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This scripture reading is from Romans 8, 31 through 34. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who will then condemn us? No one, for Christ 
Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. O oh, death, where is that your victory? Amen. As our ushers come forward, we're going to continue our worship through our giving. It is your gifts that makes us able to do uh, ministry outreach events like the Afternoon in the Park for our community. So thank you as you support the ministries of God's kingdom through this church. May we bow again in prayer. Almighty God, you are hope personified. As we give, we give with the expectation that what we give will go forth and will bring that same hope to those around us. We ask your blessing upon what is given and upon those that give for the sake of your kingdom through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
happy Easter. Happy Easter. I scared you. Well, I didn't mean to scare you. Well, how many of you enjoy games? How many of you enjoy games? Adults, how many of you enjoy games? Woohoo! Me too. What's the purpose of a game? To what? To what? Oh, well, that's a good answer. I have to be honest. I expected somebody to say what? To win. To win. Yes, to win. That's right. The purpose of a game is to win. Well, sometimes we look like this if we don't win, right? It's really hard to know. Oh, yes. Gosh. Has that, let's be honest, has that ever been you when you've not won? Yeah, I've got that streak inside of me where that's what, even if I didn't show that on the outside, I felt that on the inside. Can you point to your chest? It feels like that on the inside, right? Well, Friday... Two days ago, when Jesus died on the cross, his friends, what were his friends called, kids? You've been studying it. The disciples. Do you think they probably felt a little bit like that guy on the inside, right? They felt what? Not just sad, but what? Can you give me a descriptive word? How do they feel on the inside? What do you think? What? Sad or defeated they felt crushed good they felt crushed throw their heads down hands on their forehead so sad because they felt like they had not won but lost but guess what today feels like let's look oh my goodness they're winners let's look at one more yes they have won they have won because he is risen. Good. He is risen. Can you say that with me? He is risen. That's like saying we have the victory, right? Right? So we've been saying that all day. Oh, death, where is your victory? Say, oh, death, where is your sting? All right. So can you pray with me quickly? Dear God, thank you that you have given me the victory. We love you. Forgive our sins. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. There's a lot of you, so this is very important. With your walking feet, <laughs> we don't trip over each other. I'd like you to walk to Miss Laura. And you're going to get to walk to Children's Church and have a grand old time. A grand old time if you want to. Oh, that's so good. I love these walking feet. Our next scripture comes from Matthew 28, 5 through 8. But the angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's been raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they laid him. Now hurry, go and tell his disciples. He's been raised from the dead. He's going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. I've given the message to you. And with great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs>
scripture reading is from Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. O oh, death, where is your victory? Amen. Thank you. Would you pray with me again? God, we hear your word. and Holy Spirit, we ask for the wisdom to understand it. Amen. The family was hosting everyone for Easter, and the mother was busy finalizing preparations. All the people gathered around, ready to get the food, and she asked young Susie if she'd like to say the blessing. Susie said, well, Mommy, I wouldn't know what to say. She said, just bow your head and say what you heard Mommy say. So she bows her head and says, Dear God, why did I invite all these people I don't even like over here today? <laughs> uh, e Easter's a special time. It's a time when we gather and celebrate. We get together with friends and family. Or we get together with blood family and family that's not necessarily blood, but family either way. And we do a lot of good things. We eat a lot of good food. We eat ham. We eat turkey and dressing. We eat deviled eggs. <laughs> There's a running joke about our church picnics and deviled eggs. Don't, don't worry. You just have to come more often and you'd be in on those things, right? So we, we do a lot of good stuff. And, and, and that's all good. That's, that it's a good thing to celebrate. It's a good thing to be together. It's a good thing to join and to enjoy each other's presence. But we're celebrating for a reason. Easter is not only about good food. It's not only about bunnies and chocolates. It's not only about seeing our family. Which, by the way, I have to say, I feel like this generation's missing out not painting, hiding, finding, and eating the vinegar-coated eggs that the sun had cooked a little more while they were hidden. See, people my age and older, we remember those. Those were the most delicious eggs of all. But Easter is great because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what holds all of that together. That's what makes it such a special day. Every week we get together for worship, and when we do, we recite the Apostles' Creed. What the Apostles' Creed, very simply, the essential statements of our faith. These are the things that most Christians agree on. I mean, we may have different ways of doing worship. We may have different bits of theology about different aspects of what we believe. But the faith contained in the creed is the substance of the faith that most Christians across denominations say, yes, these things are essential. And one of those statements, in my opinion, is the most essential. It's the one statement that makes all the other statements matter. And we say that we believe in Jesus Christ and that on the third day he rose from the dead. And that means so much for us today. Very briefly, I'd like to share with you what I think that means for us. First, I think it means that we have nothing ultimately to fear. You know, in, in life, we're going to face a lot of things. And on Friday... Those disciples who had left homes, they had left businesses, they had left everything to follow Jesus, who they believed was the Messiah. On Friday and Saturday, I'm sure they were afraid. I'm sure the world felt really, really dark. Have you ever been in what one of the church fathers called the dark night of the soul? You ever been in that time of darkness? It may not last a day, it may not last only a week, it may last months, it may even last years. But friends, that time doesn't have the final say. As those disciples 
cowered in fear on Friday and Saturday, had they only remembered the words of Jesus, had they only remembered the promise that he would not leave them, that he would not abandon them, that he would not forsake them, and then that promise was made true on that Easter Sunday. And from our passage, we saw that Jesus told them, all authority in heaven and on earth is now given to him. So listen to his words in John's gospel. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Isn't that the truth? Every day seems to bring a new trial of its own. If it's not in our life, it's in the life of someone we love. If it's not in the life of someone that we love, it's in the life of someone somewhere else in the world. There are trials and tribulations and sorrows. And if you turn on the news, if you open up Facebook, if you open up your social media feed, you will be bombarded with struggle and turmoil and strife and fear and difficulty and pain. And yet listen to the final words of Jesus from this scripture. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Friends, on the cross, the world, through every bit of hatred and evil that it had at Jesus, and he took every ounce of it, and he still rose again. That means for us, whatever difficulty we're facing, whatever trial is looming, whatever darkness is over our lives, is never, ever the end. We've been saying it all morning long. Even death itself has no sting left. It still hurts when we lose a loved one, but it's not the end. Friends, through Jesus Christ, we can overcome even death itself. How do we know this is true? Because on the third day, he rose again. Secondly, it means that we will also never be truly alone. At the end of our passage this morning, Jesus made a promise that he would be with his disciples always, even to the end of the age. You know what that means? It means that even if all we know and see crumbles and fades away, Jesus will remain with us. I've said this before. I don't think the worst thing in life is to go through something difficult. I think the worst thing is to go through it and feel like you're all alone. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but that aloneness when you go through that trial can be suffocating. Sometimes it feels like just taking your next breath takes every ounce of energy that you have. But friends, because of Easter, you and I are never, ever truly alone. Because Jesus knows exactly how you feel. He knows what it is to be afraid. He knows what it is to be betrayed. He knows what it is to lose all that he has and knows and loves. Jesus even knows what it feels like to think that God has abandoned you. Remember his words on the cross, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I say in that moment, Jesus was at his most human. Because if you've never been to a point in your life where you've asked God that very question, live a little longer and you'll get there one day. You will look to heaven and say, God, where are you at? And in that moment, friends, Jesus Christ knows exactly how you feel. You and I are never truly alone because the resurrection is proof that God, his father, never did abandon him. But finally, the last thing that this means for us today, it means we have a story to tell. All right, if you're friends with me on Facebook, what do I love posting about most? Movies. Movie. <laughs> see, see how quick that response was? Not, not just movies. My reviews, my rankings, my lists. Oh, yeah, it's list time with three exclamation points at least twice a month. I love talking about things that I'm excited about. But you know what? I'm not alone. How many of you have been, if not on social media, in some other medium of, of communication talking about Kim Mulkey and everything going on with 
women's basketball for LSU. How many of you have been talking about what the Saints are doing or not going to do in the offseason and the draft? How many of you talk about your children or your grandchildren? My oldest just got his scholarship to Tulane. He's getting a full ride and he's going down there this summer. Man, I'm excited. I've got a story to tell. Or you know what? Even if it's not that, if a new restaurant opens up and it's delicious, what's one of the first things you're going to do? You're going to tell somebody about it. We love to tell people about things that matter. Friends, nothing matters more than this. Jesus told his disciples, in what we commonly call the Great Commission, but you know, those are fancy words. Here's what Jesus said. I'm alive, and people need to know about it. I've done something for you, and you need to go tell people about it. People need to hear the good news. Did you know that's the word gospel? That's what it literally means? Gospel doesn't mean tell folks where they're going instead. Tell them where they're going to go if they don't accept Jesus. The word gospel literally means good news. So again, we don't have a shortage of places to eat in Monroe and West Monroe. But when a new one pops up and it's good, I'm going to tell everybody. How much more than a good place to eat do people need to know that they don't have to feel alone anymore? Do people need to know that there's hope beyond what they're facing? Because let's be honest, you're not always going to come through the other side of every single trial you face in life. As much as we want to, at some point, the trial we face in this life is going to be the last one. And people need to know desperately that there's hope beyond that. Or if they do make it through the other side, they need to know that the pieces can be picked up and rebuilt. They need to know that this is not the end. And Paul wrote in the book of Romans, how are they going to know if no one tells them? You know, the best way a new business gains customers is through word of mouth. Advertisements can do everything that they hope to do. But they can't do as much as one person telling another, you really need to go check this place out. So listen, I want to say this very carefully. The Bible is good. It's more than good. The, the Bible is one of the great ways we get to know God. But you telling someone what Jesus has done for you is probably going to make the most impact of anything. If God has been good to you, if Jesus has done anything in your heart and your life, somebody around you needs to hear about it. Listen to this final scripture in Mark's gospel. This is after uh, Jesus had healed a man who had been demon-possessed. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family. Tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead is the reason we do all of this. If Jesus is not alive, this is just a very nice social gathering. But if Jesus is alive, then change in my heart and change in your heart are actually possible. If Jesus is alive, then those loved ones that we have said goodbye to, we've not said goodbye, we've only said, I'll see you soon. If Jesus is alive, then all of this stuff that God says is possible can actually be for us today. The hope the joy, the peace, and then the final scripture we're going to hear from in just a moment. All because he rose on the third day. And friends, we have the privilege, not the burden, not the obligation. We have the joy and the privilege 
to be the ones to tell people about it. To tell them that Christ is risen and to tell them what he has done for us. So one final thought there. If you're sitting here today and you say, well, Chris, I've never had God do anything in my heart. Come and talk to me after the service. I'd love to walk you through what praying a prayer of faith looks like. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we are grateful that you are risen. And we are grateful for all that you've done in our lives and all that you will do. God, may we be open to experiencing your grace. May we be open to letting you walk with us and comfort us. And may we be open to sharing that with others until the day of your return. And we pray it all through your name. Amen. Scripture reading is Revelations 21, verses 3 through 4. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be there with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. O oh, death, where is your victory? Is your sting. Stand and join us for our final song, Crown Me with Many Crowns. Amen. Before our dismissal, let me just extend an invitation. If you do not worship with us regularly and you don't have a church home, this sure is a great one. We'd love to see you again. Don't forget to visit that guest welcome table in the back corner and come shake my hand. I'll be at the back door over there. We receive this benediction. Go forth knowing the power and the hope and the joy of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.